take a journey on a dangerous train ride into the realms of the dreamlands in Horror on the Orient Express. <laughs> Thank you for joining me here at Tainter Mouse Studio D. I'm Kevin Delp. Horror on the Orient Express is a co-op game for one to four players that takes about an hour and a half to two hours to play. This game is going to crowdfunding from Chaosium, who is sponsoring this video. I'll have a link to the Kickstarter in the description of this video. As in all of our overview videos, we'll give you an idea on how the game is played, but we won't be sharing our thoughts on likes or dislikes. This is a prototype, and the actual production of the game is going to be different. Also, we'll be playing this game live on our YouTube channel March 21st at 7 p.m. Eastern, and we'd love for you to join us online. Now let's take a look at Horror on the Orient Express. Now remember this is a prototype, but you can see that there are a lot of components here in the game. The boards, cards, tokens, bags, minis, dice, player boards, the cardboard train, and a whole lot more. Here's a quick overview of the game. The game is played over a series of turns. On your turn, you'll be able to take a main action, like fighting monsters, talking to passengers, and some basic actions, like moving around the train, closing and opening curtains, and things like that. After you take actions, you'll draw an event token. Some of them have instant effects, and others will affect the game later. At certain points of the game, you'll need to resolve the event board, and then at the end of your turn, you'll move the train one space. Let's jump into the game a little bit more in depth, and we'll start with the investigators. That'll be you. Currently, there are four possible investigators to choose from. The retired gunslinger, chemistry professor, committed preacher, and millionaire boy. On your turn, you can take one main action and up to two basic actions in any order. They all have different skills. Uh, these are like the main actions that you see on the player board. How well they are at fighting monsters, talking to passengers, influencing the board state, and everyone has the same six basic actions and one unique basic action like the retired gunslinger who can banish a monster. You'll be spending stamina to take your basic actions. Investigators also need to manage their sanity. You run out of those and you become insane and immediately lose the game for everyone. Another main action that everyone has is resting. When you do this, you'll get to spend experience based on the revealed arrows on your player board. This is important to help you upgrade a skill, learn a new skill, or even use your lucid skill. Then you're gonna restore five stamina and move your action cubes back. Okay, so what are you trying to accomplish as a group? Well, for starters, you don't want to lose, and there are quite a few ways to lose. But to win, the train needs to reach its final destination and you need to correctly identify the suspects in the train. These are not investigators. Each suspect is either a cultist or not a cultist. It's sort of like a mini deduction game that you're playing. There are clue tokens that each suspect has that are going to be face down, and you'll be revealing them throughout the game. These will help you determine whether or not they are cultists. As you progress, you'll be able to deduce what tokens may or may not be on certain suspects. There's a handy dandy player aid in the prototype that helped with this. One of the main ways of revealing the clue tokens is by talking to passengers about suspects. You'll be pulling tokens from the conversation bag and you're trying to match on the non-split tokens. If you match on the split tokens, you're gonna fail your talk, which isn't good. So it's pushing your luck how far you want to go or not when talking. Do you pull one more to hopefully get a good match? The other way to reveal who the suspects are is by fulfilling their desire. Each suspect can only have one desire card, and if you fulfill it, then you'll reveal all their tokens. But beware, if you fulfill the desire of a cultist, bad things will happen. There's a way to throw out a cultist which could be helpful too in the game. 
Only one way to win, but seven ways to lose. I mentioned one already, a player goes insane when they lose all their sanity. You also lose if the train reaches the end of the track and you don't successfully guess the allegiance of each suspect, cultist or not cultist. Another way to lose is too many monsters. Monsters will be spotting on the board and your job is to push them off the train and get rid of them by any means necessary. Also, if an effect would make the train halt to zero movement, then the players are going to lose. And some rituals have failure conditions too. If you've used up all the essence to place on portals, you're going to lose that way. <laughs> Now, normally Essence is placed on them when the train moves to reveal a new landscape tile. The players lose if the last coffin is placed on the Orient Express. Here's how coffins work. The passengers have different emotions, and the worst is when they go insane. They're just really easy to kill that way. Usually, you'll be placing a coffin on one when the vampire or monsters kill them. Now, this leads me to the next big thing that happens in the game resolving the event board. This is the game doing bad things. The event board activates when three different event tokens are placed on the board. Then you'll start at the top and work your way down resolving each event. Here's a quick overview of what some of the events are. The monster event works like this. All the monsters that match the larger monster icon will attack. Only one monster that matches the smaller icon attacks, and then the portal icon shows which monsters spawn. Monsters like open windows, so this is a good reason to get them closed if monsters are around. Now the vampire will attack one victim, and he likes the curtains closed, so keep those curtains open wherever the vampire is. Portals with text will activate if they have at least one essence on them, so managing your essence is important in the game. The passenger event could really be anything. Just read the card and do what it says. <laughs> it's not going to be good. If the ritual is activated, look at the ritual board and follow the instructions listed. And then, if there are any monsters in limbo, return them all to the last train car. Another big thing in the game are the story elements to bring you into the world of horror on the Orient Express. There are story cards that you might interact with, and there are feature cards. The features are revealed on tokens on the different suspects. You could take a basic action to interact with these feature tokens to gain benefits and to reveal more of the lore. So that's a super quick overview of Horror on the Orient Express. We'll be doing a full playthrough live on our channel later this week, so join us Thursday night, March 21st at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on YouTube. If you enjoy thinky games or co-op games or like this kind of theme, then check out the campaign from Chaosium on Kickstarter. And we would love for you to like and subscribe.